Uh, hi Kunal. So we'll start the session in like we can start actually. I don't think in your analysis anyone else is joining. So we can definitely start. Uh, so today we'll, I'm going to teach uh, ES6 JavaScript features and along with that there are a couple of other topics also like object deep comparison and event uh, uh, delegation which would have the event bubbling and capturing all of that. So yeah that's the gist of what I'm going to teach today. And uh, like if you are watching this video for the first time you can watch the other videos in this series. It will be there in the playlist. So there is two playlists JavaScript, understand JavaScript, understand React. So yeah, uh, cool. Let's start with it. So I have given the link of the GitHub repo over here, where I have given all the examples in one README file. If you want to access that, uh, <clears throat> but we will be learning it one by one. So yeah, let's start. <clears throat> so first thing that we are going to learn is template literals. Uh, so basically, uh, earlier if we went to wanted to do anything in JavaScript, like with manipulation with string, we used to use plus. Okay. So let me show you that. So let's say we have a string console. Uh, um, and then we have a. Then we have we used to like this. Okay. Prior to ES6, so this works okay. But <clears throat> then, because of this, like it's not so much convenient because you have to write again plus and then again some string maybe there. Then you might have to again add concatenate. So then they introduce something which is known as template returns. So basically, you write your entire string in backticks. Okay, so backtick is the key below your escape key. Okay, so you write your backtick key. And then you write I am, and then whatever variables are there, or in expression basically, you can uh, uh, put it in the this uh, dollar and curly braces. Now here you can access any variable or expression. So here now, yeah, it works like this. Okay, so here also I have given ex uh, uh, examples. So you can even have a function as well. Function will also work. So basically anything that can evaluate into at the end of string so that will work so let me take the example over here so we have a function get name okay uh, and we have a welcome message string which is like uh, welcome to avengers and then it uh, in this uh, dollar and curly braces it is calling the function so that's it written in the string and at the end we are displaying the entire string so mm, yeah welcome to avengers Peter Parker cool so that's about template literal it's very simple nothing too much about too much to learn about but yeah now coming to shorthand properties so let's learn about this so there would be a lot of instances where your property name and your key name okay means key and value both are same in an object okay so let's take a different approach let's say I have uh, uh, name 20 and const you um, and now what we usually will do we'll give the key and then we'll give the proper uh, like the value actually the variable which has the value like this but in case your <coughs> key name is same as the variable which contains the value okay so you don't have to do like this uh, even though it will it's fine you even if you do this that is totally fine super hero this is totally fine but it is redundant meaning it's not necessary to put it over here you can directly have like this so this is what is known as shorthand property so if your key name and the variable which contains this value is same then you can just give that key name then it is fine it is understood that it will get the value from here okay so that is your shorthand property. 
going to next arrow functions we have learned about this actually we have also used about we used them but let's still understand them once so that you know it well hmm. so this is a normal function okay now if i want to do it convert it into a uh, arrow function this is how it will do either cons let where anything is fine and you can give the name of the function then there comes the equal signs there comes the uh, parameters then there's an arrow that's hence the name comes like uh, arrow function and then whatever if you give over here without the body okay without your the body of your function that will be directly returned so you don't have to do implicit uh, sorry explicitly return okay uh, otherwise you can also write like this let me show you this could also be written like const get the name equals to then I can basically have a body and then I can return images. This also works, but this is the shorthand way of writing it. Okay, faster and with less less syntax. So yeah, that is one thing. Mm. If we have only one parameter, then you don't need even need to give this parentheses. You can just give that one parameter. But if we have more than one parameters, then you have to wrap it in the parentheses. Okay and uh, yeah let's let's come to this example uh, uh, in this example basically what i am trying to do is that uh, get member info okay so get member info i want to return an object but the issue is that if i directly return an object without these thing then it would think that this is a function body right it will not think that this is okay this is an object rotation it will think this is a function body so in order to uh, avoid that confusion you can wrap that with a parenthesis so that it will be understood by the compiler that is the arrow function which is returning a object okay so that's the thing so again nothing much uh, tough about this everything is simple uh, by the way if you guys have any doubt uh, uh, sound and screen brightness. Did you try like because the sound I think is fine. Screen brightness I can increase. One second. Screen brightness I have increased. So I hope the brightness is now better. But sound I think it should it's just like the uh, I mean have, have have the same sound in all the uh, videos and it's fine. Like it's, to me it's fine. Cool. Um, and I don't see any complaint as such. So. <coughs> Yeah, so we were at the error functions. Now we can uh, learn about destructuring. Okay, so let's learn about that. Let's take the example from here. Mm. So let's say we have a object of uh, having properties real name, superhero name, team. Now, usually, how would we go about uh, accessing the values? Like we'll have const name equals to uh, member info dot real name. This is one way of getting the name and storing it in the name, and then later uh, using this name variable wherever we require this real name. Okay, but then uh, in ES six, this was in, this was introduced like uh, destructuring, where you can directly uh, let me just remove this access the name if you want to give the variable name as same as the key then directly you can use destructuring basically use curly braces within that uh, access whatever property you want and that property uh, will be created as a variable okay then you can reference that uh, later okay so here in this from this object i wanted to access just the uh, property super enormous. so i am accessing that okay now i can reference this anywhere Without having to access like member info dot superhero, I can directly info directly use uh, superhero name. Okay. Uh, also, you can if you want, you can uh, destructure multiple. So if you want, you can even destructure team. Okay. Then later you can reference team anywhere. So that's about object. You can do destructuring even with the uh, array. Okay. So let's see how it works. So since here uh, there is no like uh, definite key, like the keys are the uh, indexes right so it's not a string so in that case what you can do is uh, you have to maintain the order so here if I do a 
B, that means A is the first one, Tony Stark, B is Steve Rogers. Now I am giving gap, like I am not, uh, I'm giving, I don't want to store these uh, third and fourth, directly I want to store the fifth one, okay. So I can do it like that. Now let me just console.log so you will be able to understand. I can do this also. So let's see. See, you are able to see Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, and Clint Barton. Okay. So we are trying to access only first, second, and the fifth. If you see in the terms of array index, then zero, first, and fourth. We skip these two. Okay. So this is how you can do destructuring both in objects and in arrays. Uh, hey, we, yeah, uh, welcome. Uh, cool. You guys, if you have any doubt, do let me know. Everything is not so difficult. Like it, there's nothing con conceptual about it. It's just uh, how you write uh, ES6 features. That's all. But still, if you want me to explain it again, do let me know. Now, <coughs> coming to default parameters. Okay. Okay. So we have a function set team, and we, when we call the function, uh, what we want to do is like we know that there are a couple of teams. Okay. Now, but most of them belong to Avengers team. So what we can do instead of again and again uh, having it called with the argument of Avengers, we can give it a default team name. So only if the team name is different, then put it. Otherwise, no need to put. Okay. So that's what default parameters uh, helps you with. So you can give a default value to a parameter. So in case you uh, someone doesn't enter it, it's already there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's about default parameters. Nothing like uh, special about it. So let me just comment these things. Uh, let's just see what this shows. So it shows Avengers. And if I let, let's say I want to change the team name, then I can see just a GOTG, Guardians of the Galaxy. Then it will see GOTG. Okay. So that's how default parameters work. Okay. Now let me comment these. Let's come on to this. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, this is not form formatted properly. One second. Okay. So we have a function set member info. Okay. Yeah. Now here, the parameter itself is just one object. Okay. It's not different uh, parameters, different values. It's just one object. So what are we trying to do? Is we are trying to initialize the object. Okay, the values, the properties within the object. Now this is like, this might be a little confusing. Just pay attention because this side of type of syntax is used in code bases. So that's why I'm trying to explain this. Okay, because whenever first I encountered uh, like a, a year back or somewhere sometime, I was not able to understand. Okay, what is happening over here? Okay, so let me just help you understand. So basically, this is a <coughs> function which takes a object as a parameter. Okay, now in that object, I have three properties. One is real name, one is superhero, and one is team. So basically what I will do is I want to initialize each of them. Okay. I want to give default values to each of them. So how can I give default value is like in that I can say real name is Tory Stark, superhero name is Iron Man, team is Avengers. Now let's say I have a member info where I'm just giving real name and superhero name because I know the team is not changing, team is same. So I can just enter those two and it will work completely fine. Okay, so let me just comment this one. Let's see what will be the output of this. So I'm calling this function with the object, okay, object argument, which is having real name and superhero name. Okay, so I'm overriding both of these value, but the team name, I'm not doing anything. So it will come from the default one. So let's go, let's see. Real name is Bruce Banner, superhero name is Hulk, and team is Avengers. Okay, so that's how it's working. Okay, now let's not have a new line actually. Yeah, so this is how it's working. And let's say if I don't give any argument. Okay. If I don't give any argument, then the uh, default values of the object will be given. So 
real name is Tony Stark, superhero name is Iron Man and team is Avengers. Okay, so this is how you give the uh, default values for a parameter who, which is an object. Okay. I hope you are able to understand. So uh, let me explain you what is happening over here. So basically it is assuming that what we are sending is and sort of an empty object. So that's why we are destructuring it. Okay, this is the destructuring part, what I already taught you. And then destructuring that, then overriding the values, sort of things. Okay, so bit might be a little complicated, but uh, uh, I hope you are able to understand this. Um, cool. Let's go to the next slide. Spread and rest. Okay, again, very important one. People usually uh, are confused like which is spread and which is red because notation is the same. Okay, so <coughs> let uh, let us take the examples. So uh, we have an uh, uh, array of Avengers. Okay which has six of them. Now what I want to do is I want to add a couple of new Avengers, okay, new recruits. So what I can do is I will create an array, okay, and then spread the arrays from here. What spread does, it will put each and every value in this. It will put each and every value of this array into this array, okay. So that will be spread and then later I am adding three more arrays. Okay, so let me show you this part. New Avengers. Okay, let me console log that. Console dot log. New Avengers. So if you see now, I have all of them. Okay, because I spread my previous array and then added Vision, Manda, and Falcon. Okay, this is what yes, spread operator is. Cool. Um. Again, okay, spread operator works for uh, arrays and also for your objects. Okay. So let's see. This is an object, member info. Okay. Which has real name, superhero name, and team. Okay. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to update his team. Okay. So let's just assume that this is after like uh, Infinity War and uh, Rocket lost his team and now he is part of uh, Avengers. So <coughs> I want to update his team. So what I'll do is again, I'll use the. Uh, bracket object notation and in which I'll spread the previous object okay so all these values and key values are available and I'll override okay the uh, any of the uh, existing uh, property not just that I can even add new one so let's say I want to add a new one let's say type I'm not sure what I'm going to write but yeah right like this so it will first check whether this property is existing in this then it will override if it is not it will add it okay let's see this output so new member info okay so see if you the new member info here name rocket uh, super uh, rocket team has changed because it was this already existing property and it was got overrided and new property was added type and okay so this is your uh, spread operator Okay, I hope that is clear. But make sure their uh, order should be uh, order matters in this. Okay, because if I chain like this okay, and I put it first, and then I spread the member info, then can tell me what will come. Uh, mm, somebody asking me are you able to help me? Yeah, buy me coffee one for now. I have stopped. Uh, currently, I'm very busy, but uh, I'll let you know. Okay, uh, just ping me on Discord. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Cool. cool. So, yeah, can someone tell me what will be the team now in the new member info? Once I spread it like this. Okay. okay let me <laughs> tell you so basically you added a property here okay this is a new object basically in that you gave a property yes correct so it will be uh, Avengers real name. no actually thing will because we are having team Avengers already and then we are spreading this member info so in that also we have a team so team will be overrided to guardians and it will not be Avengers okay 
see now team is guardians okay not avengers because i put it over here first and then later there is an object which i'm spreading which has a property of t so that will override this one okay so that's the thing that i was trying to explain i hope that is clear so basically whichever comes later okay we will override the previous property if it has the same key name cool so now let's understand this was the spread operator now let's understand the rest operator so basically the rest operator will combine all your uh, arguments okay so let's say i don't know like how many of the arguments i'm going to get so let's say display heroes okay what i'll do is i i will uh, say tony i'll say like these are the heroes okay but i'm i'm not sure how many are, am i going to get okay so this is the a uh, rest operator basically rest operator will combine all of them into one array okay so now all of these will be part of one array and then if you see i am using for in okay for in also is a new thing so basically for in will loop over your uh, array okay so for in heroes is my array and constant hero is each element in that and i am logging the heroes of hero okay so that's how i am doing let's see One, two, three, four, five, six. So even if I go ahead and uh, remove some still little work or add some still little work, if I remove them, still it is working because I am not sure how many arguments I am going to get. So I just uh, use the uh, rest operator to combine all of them and then iterate over it. Okay, because now it will be in the array of heroes. Okay, now one more thing. If I use here like part uh, Avengers, this is a spread operator i am spreading all my uh, elements of the array as an argument to this function and this here is a rest operator that that is combining all my arguments into one single array okay so like it, uh, it is very significant difference because when you start coding and you see this being used in parameters this being used in arguments you will be getting confused so try to remember like this in parameters okay so i already explained what is the difference between parameter and an argument so what in parameters when you use this three notation it will be your uh, rest operator when it will be combining all of them into one single array but whenever you are using this three dots in a argument as an argument then it is usually yeah like your spread operator okay so i hope that is clear coming to modules modules like uh, again uh, very simple to understand uh, i do plan to take like how it works internally maybe in one of the coming up coming sessions do let me know if you guys want to know about that uh, but for now i'll just uh, help you understand how it works uh, in a simple manner okay so yeah actually uh, i can show it here itself so let's say we have a file member.js okay and uh, in that we are what we are doing is we are exporting Okay, actually, let me show you it in. Hmm. So here, I'll have to create a new file. Mm. Okay, and in that, what I will do, I will export these two. So these two values, these two strings are available in members yes, and I'm exporting them. Okay, individually, both of them. Okay. And now what I'll do is I'll go to my main file, I'll import them. Script. And src meaning by source is where it is dot slash members, and this is of type module. I have to tell that it has it is a module type. Okay, now if I try to oh, do one more thing, team. Let me create this another another one also. This one team js. Then I'll go into Zen mode and I'll put so team dot js. Mm, mm, so here basically what i'm doing is team is there but here i'm using default okay 
so let's understand the difference between them uh, then mode launch p yes like this so command p that's our html let me import that one also now what i can do is i can access them over here let's say i'll do import uh, not team import hero one and hero two hero one hero two from where from member js okay and import team it was a yeah capital team from team and console dot log hero one uh, hero two and team Let's see if this works yep Steve Rogers, Tony Stark and Avengers ok so you can confirm hero is Steve Rogers, hero 2 is Tony Stark and team is Avengers now let's see how we try to access it so here uh, in the first members.js I have <coughs> uh, exported them as a uh, named, ex named exports ok uh, meaning uh, I did not do the default export I do individual export of both of them ok uh, let me show you like this export constant export constant so if you are exporting like this like name constant then this is how you import it you use a curly braces okay in that whatever named exports are there you can access them from wherever it is okay now let's understand default export and there can be any uh, number of named exports there is no limitation okay and let's understand default so basically in default you can only have one default export okay so in that because it is the default export meaning there is only one then I can directly import whatever it is name from of the file because I know there is only one default export and uh, that's going to be there so no need to do like this destructuring sort of thing you can directly ex uh, access it okay now uh, another thing is that you can give alias okay, okay. like let's say I give like hero2 as hero3 I can do that okay now hero2 will not work okay let, let's, let me show you that See, hero2 is not defined why because I changed it as alias see, I gave it as alias of uh, hero3 so now I can only access it as a hero3 okay this also can be done okay you can change the name over here so that's about your import and export basically your modules uh, again if you want to learn about this in depth how it is working uh, I'll, I might teach them in later session okay today we are just learning the syntactical wise how uh, ES6 is conditional ternary operator okay again this is very very important uh, most of the things that I'm teaching you you will be using day to day in your react code okay if you are using react but it also would be used in any other framework but yeah because I'm a react developer so I'm saying about it <coughs> so let's say we have a name clean button now we have to select the superhero name but that is based on a uh, what is the condition so if name is clint button then give the hero name as hawkeye otherwise nothing okay so it's just like if else condition so this is your condition this is your if this is your else okay so i think that's pretty much simple okay let's just console log and see console log, log superhero name okay so that it is having Hawkeye because it is it's the same, which is clean button. Okay, now let's go below. Now I have another name. Okay, Tony Stark. Now what I'm saying is that if name is clean button, okay, then give Hawkeye. Otherwise, I'm now chaining two conditional operators. Okay, I'm chaining two conditions. Otherwise, check if name is equal to Tony Stark okay so if it is Tony Stark then give Iron Man otherwise give 
none so first what i'm checking first of all what i did i overrid okay there was already a let of name i override it i name override it to tori stack now i'm checking if it is clean button send hokai otherwise check this other condition okay if this condition is satisfied then again if iron man else null so you can even chain conditional operator though this is not much so much recommended but still uh, i'm teaching you because it is uh, if it is already there in the code base then you might want to understand how it is working okay and i think chaining two of the conditional operator is fine i mean okay depends how unclean your code looks like but i think it is fine so yeah let's see now what super hero name to will show iron man okay because it is not clean button it's story stuff and we get iron man so that is about your conditionally uh, sorry conditional ternary operator going to next that is uh, logical uh, and uh, i mean also known as short circuit operator mm -hmm. so i i talk about this a lot so it's very useful operator let's understand what's happening again heavily used in your react or conditional rendering even this is used for conditional rendering so we have a uh, array of avengers okay so i want to log avengers are present only when there are avengers in this array so first of all what i need to see is whether if avengers is not a falsy value meaning it's not null or undefined or any sort of falsy values okay so if you want to see what are the falsy values you can come over here md and dot io falsy Okay, so you this will tell you what are the false values. False, zero, minus zero, empty string, may be it uh, double quotes, single quotes, or um, backticks. Okay, null, undefined, nan, document at all. This was something that I didn't know. Okay, good. So yeah, these are all the false values. So let's go back. So basically, I'm checking whether it's not null or undefined. Basically, okay, or it has a false value. if that is not the case it is not null or undefined then i am checking whether the length is not equal to 0 okay so if its length is equal to 0 then i i there is no avengers present right it is array is there but length is it's empty array then avengers are not present so first i am checking this then i am checking this then i am only printing this so it is a short circuit operator so if this is false it will not go ahead okay it will just uh, short 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 circuit over here let's say this is true but the length is 0 then again it will short circuit over here it will not go ahead Okay, that's why it's known as short circuit operator. And uh, let's see, we see Avengers are present. Okay, so let me try this. Let me make them. So you won't be seeing anything. False. False. Why? Because this is false. Okay, we are console dot logging. That's why it's false. Okay. Now, yeah. So yeah, that's about your short circuit operator. Let's go to the next one. Optional chaining. Very very important. Okay. and whenever you are using any method or an array so basically you are expect so you, you do a call fetch call and you are expecting data in your api response always deal with the null or undefined condition always assume that it will be null or undefined because lots of the time you will be trying to access some method on that okay some property on that and it will return null and you will your app will crash saying that you cannot access uh, property on null or undefined okay so always use optional chaining when you are dealing with your data from your api okay i have faced this plenty of times that's why i'm saying from my experience mm. but let's first understand it so <coughs> it's a this a object member input in which they have these three things okay so now if you try to access let's not understand for absolute chaining first so let's understand what happens by default if you try to access something okay let's not even do this or an object which does not exist okay then what do you think will be the output okay let let's see what's the output it is undefined 
so object is exist existing okay just remember object is exist existing but the property does not exist so if you try to access it it will say undefined that property is not defined basically but now if you try to access something on that property then what you are doing basically you are trying to some access something on the undefined so that will give you reference error type error sorry not reference error my bad so okay this should be type error i'll update the doc also cannot access name okay because this is undefined so you cannot access anything on undefined that is like obviously like you cannot do dot of undefined on all so <clears throat> this is what problem this optional checking solves so basically what it does so this it is similarly like short circuit basically if this does not find uh let's say this is undefined and you try to access something on it so it will return and uh, let me okay let me just comment this so that you don't see any confusion so you it will just return undefined so your app will not basically crash okay so here if you do optional chaining it will treat it just like an uh, your short circuit operator it will not go ahead because it will know that this is undefined so i should not now try to access a property on it okay this is what it shows question dot okay so what is your optional chaining this is your optional chaining operator question dot okay so mm, i hope that was clear uh, array higher order what it should be so actually i did not update the slides uh, but i obviously i'm going to teach you today so let me just teach it to you mm. so there are couple of methods in array okay let me show you what are the methods array has array let's if we go to any one of them as you will see over here see these are the methods available okay so at concat copy within entries every fill filter find flat flat map for each there are lots of methods available okay push pop and all of them we usually use shift and shift slice splice there are lots of methods but we are going to currently learn about map uh, reduce and filter okay these are most widely used okay um so once you understand them you can come over here and you can check the uh, reference let's say if you want to use find so you will be able to understand how it works so it it just says right a uh, syntax it expects a callback function which takes three argument element index array so once you understand these three then you will be able to understand all of them others also it will be very simple okay so let's try to understand map filter and reduce and not just that uh one second let me see after that is a uh, bubbling capturing deep comparison okay so we will probably be taking the polyfills of them also and i'll be teaching them okay so yeah let's learn map first so let's understand what is map used for okay so basically if you want to transform each and every element in your array okay let's say your array is oh uh, actually i might have the example over here hmm now this is your array members okay and what you want to do is now you want to transform you want to create another array from this which will have the team name and also the id of them okay so now each element currently in this array is a string but now afterwards you want to create a new array whose each element will be an object which will contain the id the name and the team okay so basically you want to transform this current existing array so how will you do it using map so uh, we will use uh, const updated members equals to members dot map okay now let's understand what does map do so map takes a callback okay so let's define that callback separately so that it will be more clear const map cb equals to now this callback that map takes it has three 
uh, implicit parameters. Okay, well, first one of them is the current element. Second is the current index. The third is the entire array. Okay, so let me explain you. Okay, so members dot map. Map is a function. Oh, sorry, a method on array. Okay, and in that <coughs> we have a callback. That callback <coughs> has access to the current element. So basically, your map filter and reduce all of them. They will iterate all over your array. So for every time for each uh, element, it will execute this same callback function. Okay, so this callback function at every iteration will have access to the current element, the current index, and the entire array. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create a uh, new object. So in an arrow function, if I want to return an object, how can I do it? You just learn. You have to wrap it with parentheses. Okay, so this is the uh, object that we are returning. Now how I want to do? I want to do id. That will be my current index because I don't want to start id from zero. I will do it from one. So I'll give current index plus one. Then name, which will be a current element because my current element each in each of them is the name. And then team, team I'm going to give everyone the same. So I'll give Avengers. Okay. So and now now I'll pass the callback over here. So what will map do? It will first of all iterate over each and every element. For each and every element, it will execute this callback, okay, and it will return a new object. And these new objects will be now part of a new array, and that new array will be returned, and it will be stored in this. So map always returns a new array, okay, with the modified elements. So now let's see the console dot log updated members. See, everything is an object now with an ID, name, and team. So earlier it was like this. Now I have transformed it this. Existing array did not change. Okay, existing array will still be remaining the same. Let me just show you. That. Um, see, this is the uh, original array. Nothing happened on that. The map uh, created a new instance of an array. And did this transformation, whatever you wanted, and put it, put everything in the new array. Okay, so that's what map does. Uh, I hope it is clear. How to access values inside nested objects? So if you want to access values from nested object, they like directly like. Uh, do dot rotation then then uh, then you have to access. Uh, maybe I'm not getting what your question is, but uh, yeah, that's how we like. If it's a nested object, then you just do dot 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 and you'll access. Or inside nested objects, that also you can do like you will have access to the scope outside scope. So you can access it. Uh, cool. Okay. So this is about your map. Okay, now what we can do is we can learn about filter. So filter actually let's uh, yeah for that we will use this existing updated members. So what now I want to do is I want to filter all the members whose ID is greater than three. So basically filter is it's like it's very much sufficient from the uh, name itself. It wants to filter from your existing array. So narrow down your array. Okay. So it will not transform anything. Okay. It will just filter it out, and uh, it will again uh, not edit your existing array. It will just return a new array. So let's do const filtered members equals to updated members dot filter. Okay. Uh, let me again do the callback separately. Filter CD. So what is our callback? Const 
filter cb equals to again current element current index array and what condition i want to see is that current element so current element in my uh, updated members is an object so i what i want to see is that id should be greater than 3 so what will it return it will return me true or false for each of the iterations so what will happen is this filter function okay filter method takes this callback it will execute this callback for each and every iteration for each and every iteration my current element will be there in current element i will access, uh, access the id so one two so one and two it will be returning false because those are, those are not greater than three okay so whenever this callback which is passed within filter returns false those elements will not be part of your new array and whenever the callback which is passed within the filter returns true those elements will be part of your new array okay so accordingly my part of my new array will be bruce natasha clint and thor okay let's console log and check that let's do this okay let's check natasha clint thor Okay, so even actually Bruce will not come because it's not greater than three; it's equal to three. So yeah, so Tony, Sto Tony, Steve, and Bruce, those are uh, not greater than three. They are either less than or equal to three. Uh, the IDs and ID four, five, and six they are greater than three. So Natasha, Clinton, Thor, this, those are only filtered out. Okay, and even currently I'll show you the existing will not be affected. Okay, let me show it over here. The existing array will not be affected; it will contain everything. So this is the existing error, it will trace everything. So I hope uh, map and filter is clear. Now what we are going to do, we are going to do the reduce. Okay. So um, getting values from nested objects. Oh, okay, okay, you are talking like that. Okay, yeah, that that's a different like that's a different question like that the people usually I think ask in interviews and stuff. Uh, I I will teach that in uh, one of the sessions. Okay, so don't worry about that. That that might uh, like that will have a recursion involved and stuff. So I will teach you. Um, cool. It's I think it's already there in YouTube also. Uh, I think it's in one of the Akshay Sen's video. You can check that. But yeah, if you do are not able to find, I'll, I'll uh, see it. I'll teach you. Okay, I think it's the reverse in his. I think it's a underscore underscore and then it's they are converting into object. Okay, I'll teach the reversion part, reverse part. Fine, so we are done with this. Now we are going to learn about the reduce. So for reduce, I have to have a slightly different object. So let's assume you have a cart. You hope GitHub will have. Prices will are there. So this is my cart. And with prices, I also have quantity. Sometime it works. Sometime it is quantity is one. Quantity is it's a brackets. So will be required. So quantity is three. Let's make this one makes more sense. Let's make three. Okay, so what have, what is happening is someone has come to an e-commerce website and this is their cart. They are buying two basketballs, three baseballs, two rackets, and one shoes. Now, what I want to do, I want to find the total price. Okay, so here reduce can help me. So what does reduce do? The redu job of reduce. Okay, when you should use reduce function is the to calculate a single value from an entire array. Okay, is when you should use the reduce higher order function. Okay, now let's see how it works. So I uh, explained you the purpose. Now let's see how it works. So it will always return you a single value. So total price equals to 
cart dot c it's already <laughs> the github hit uh, github is a pilot copilot is hinting here videos it will have a callback and an initial value so initial value i'm going to give zero okay because i current like i'm not assuming uh, there's already uh, something when you do the total it will always start from zero right so initial value you will give it as zero okay so now here there will be a callback function so let's say reduce cb let's understand what that callback is so const reduce cb equals to correct mm, this is the thing so this is what you can call so here there is a slight difference okay so usually in your uh, other methods like filter or map or even other methods like find or sum or every all those uh, higher order methods in the in those function the callback will have first will be the current in, current element then second will be current index third will be the entire array but in reduce the first is the accumulator accumulator meaning the current total value okay okay so that's what it will be that's, then the second will be your current value then the, the next will be index and then there will be an array so the but remember in reduce the first parameter is your accumulator now what i want to do i want to reduce so return accumulator okay so whatever is there in my accumulator plus current value dot price so current let's say current elements so current element so what is what is my uh, each and every element each and every element is an object in that price into current element dot quantity that's how i will get the total price of each and every uh, object the total price of each and every object is price into quantity and i'll add that in the accumulator okay this is the callback function which will be passed over here okay so what will this reduce function do it will iterate over my entire array okay for each uh, value each object basically over here it will execute this function okay initially my accumulator order value was zero okay then it will uh, after the first iteration it will be the uh, like 12.99 into 2 after the second iteration it will be 12.99 into 2 plus 9.99 into 3 like that at the end we will have the final value which will be our total price so let me see let me show you the total price sponsor of total price total price is 205 i think this is in dollars so it is be 205 dollars okay so that's your value okay so i hope that is clear this is how your reduce works again reduce is very important people don't use reduce for this people actually will use any for each or uh, they will just use a simple for uh, uh, loop which is fine uh, but uh, if there is already something available like reduce higher order function method then why not use that so yeah that that's uh, how these uh, methods work uh, now based on that i what i would request you whenever you are watching this video try to learn some other important methods also like sum uh, every find find index okay these are very important methods that you should learn okay and then there is splice slice now splice okay is one of the higher order method which actually modifies your existing array okay there are very rare higher order method which modify your existing array otherwise everyone every other method always preserves the existing array and then returns the new array okay so export that slice slice uh, and all of that if i have time in this session itself i'll do that but now what i'm going to do i'm going to take a break okay and uh, okay movie buff is saying no audio uh, i hope there is audio because till now i did not change any single thing in my setup um okay anyways i'm take, going to take a break i'll check if there is any audio issue but uh, yeah i'm just taking a uh, maximum five minutes of break and let's then come back
okay okay i'm back okay uh cool so uh, we learned about map filter and reduce now what we are going to learn about is the polyfills for them okay so it's not there in the slides uh, i will add it later uh, if i get time because even high, higher order method itself i have not added so um, i'll add it once i get time but for now what we can do is i uh, i know how to create this function so let me just let's if you want to find the code for that that is already there uh, i will tell you the polyfills all the polyfills code so i think it is poly here it is over here so it will be like map uh, reduce and filter all of them are available over here okay cool so yeah let me delete this and take the example from here So we will first do the polyfill for uh, map. Okay. So again, okay, to add a polyfill, so you have to add it to the prototype of the object. Okay, from which you are creating that instance. So mm, again, I I talked about this thing when I did the previous polyfills of uh, bind, called, and apply. In that, we were adding the um, those methods to the function object. Now today, because these are array higher order methods, we'll be adding it to the array objects. So remember, everything in JavaScript eventually is an object. Okay, um, so let's do that. Array dot prototype. This prototype chaining and all, I will I will be teaching in the next session. But uh, yeah, for now, let's uh, assume this. Uh, you can come back to this again if you feel like after understanding prototype that how exactly this works so basically yeah so here now i'm going to do a poly map what is this, this is a function what does the function accept it accepts the callback okay so github <laughs> copilot is helping me a lot let me just uh, find if i do if i can ignore it i can ignore it so i should so this is the thing now what you have to do is first of all create the output const output oh let's say result array because you are creating a new array you are not uh, modifying the existing one correct then what you are doing you are iterating over the array okay so for okay here you can use let i equal zero let me just use it to so use it i equal zero i less than the length of the array. Now, how do you get the length of the array? You have to use the this keyword. Now, why you to use this keyword? So, this is the main array object. Whatever arrays are created, they are created from this this array object. So, the current instance. Okay. So, whenever you will be calling any method, you will be calling members dot. Okay, members dot map, members dot filter, members dot uh, reduce. So, that's what what we have learned that within a function, what will be this pointing to? It will be pointing at the runtime from the object it is invoked. Okay, so if I'm invoking in a function from an object like members, then it will be pointing to members, right? So this will be pointing to members when I'm running it with members dot. Okay, so this dot length meaning members dot length that is uh, the length of the array. So I have to uh, iterate from zero to length of the array i plus plus normal loop result array which I created over dot push push what we have to do some operation what is that operation that operation is provided by this cb the callback function that we pass to the map it will have the access to the the first argument first parameter what is it it is the current element how can you access it this is pointing to members so this of i willing will be members of i so that will give the current element then also you should pass the i and then you should pass this because as i told you it the callback takes three things current element current index and the entire array so the entire array is represented by this this dot length gives us the length of the array 
and this of i will give us the particular element at the array so this you will be able to understand only if your concept of this is clear okay so that i have teach in the previous session so if you are able to relate it good if you are not then please go ahead and uh, see that previous session to understand this better now once this is done we just return the array well, now let's see mm, const updated members yep so polymap and here well, i'm doing inline callback this time so let me just do the same thing that we did earlier uh, so we'll be returning an object okay we'll be returning an object which will have the id which will be okay so here i need that access right member index i'm accessing both of them so index plus one name is member and team is i mean just so let's me now console dot log updated members yep i got what i wanted same this function is exactly working like map okay i hope that is clear now let's understand how will you do for filter there's nothing no no much difference okay what the difference is uh, let me do that copy this put it over here instead of this let's say poly filter okay and even what what is polyfills i have uh, explained you in last session okay so please refer refer that last session in any uh, time stamps are given in uh, all of the sessions so you can directly jump onto that if you don't want to see the entire two hour session again this accepts a callback again it will be a new array because we are not uh, manipulating the existing array again we have to iterate from zero to the entire length of the array but do we push all the members no right we push only those and we don't do any manipulation so we have to push this of i whatever is there in the array current element that only we have to push but when only if the cb returns true okay so this is how it will work so if you have to call the function which our callback is you have to pass current element the index and this meaning the entire array and if this is true then only push it otherwise no need to push it that's the only change okay i hope that is clear the filter it will have the callback it will execute in the every iteration and once that callback returns true then only you push that particular element into the result array so now let's see this again let's run this const filtered members okay here again i'll do this time inline last time we didn't do inline so member index what i want is the condition is member dot id should be greater than three and let me console dot log filter members we command this we are getting nothing why hmm interesting because we are calling it on members we should go to call it on updated members yep see now we are getting it 4 5 and 6 because those are id greater than 3 clear now comes to reduce okay so uh so before i do reduce let me explain some particular caveats of reduce so mm, Do this over here. So in reduce, uh, why did I delete it, man? I should have kept it. And it's cart equals to let's see if GitHub will give me the no. Yeah, it's giving ID this time. It's giving me.
give some suggestion give some suggestion yeah this is fine but now i just have to add quantities quantity one let's say for x let's say two or three quantity pro two fine watch one is fine tv also one is fine okay so this is our hmm. this is our cart now what we did we will try to find the total price like cars total price so i'll just use this so what if we don't give an initial value what happens then what do you think so let's try to execute and see okay, i mean i have to print it from so total price so it's not working properly see it's giving this object object and like this so if you don't give initial value it will be uh, not calculated properly okay but but if the array is a normal array okay let's say const cart equals to it just cont contains numbers okay and here what i'm trying to do is i'm just want to calculate the total okay so what i'm doing i'm just adding all of them so in that case if i don't pass the initial value let's see what happens it gives the correct value meaning if the array is a normal array with numbers in that case the initial value is taken as the first value okay that's one one will be the initial value okay otherwise if it's an object then there is you you cannot like uh, uh expect it to work uh, 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 uh normally okay so now now that we know this caveat let's implement that uh, method so let me just copy this because most of it is same so array dot prototype dot poly reduce it will take a function and also it will take an initial value right initial so i'll just say initial now we don't have to return an error but you have to return an output all its result so what what do you think should I initialize this result with actually the github hint did give the hint but let's say it will be initial okay that, that's my uh, initial value of the result now i will iterate over it okay iterate over it and i will update the result which will be like this cb this is the function now remember in reduce the callback function the first parameter is the accumulator which is this then the current element then the index and then this so this is how i create uh, calculate the result and send it now this is assuming that the result uh, like initial was there what if it is not there okay in that case in that case what i have to do is i have to check if result is undefined then yeah then result is the first value and in that case let i equals 2 will be uh, I have to check with the result meaning initial like this if initial is present then i will start from zero means i have to start from zero if it is a falsy value meaning it's undefined then i have to start from one okay so here instead of this now i have this time i hope that is uh, understandable what i'm trying to do let me explain it again so initial value is the thing that we are trying to take care of initial value if it is not given then we first check if not result meaning here i have already uh, assigned it so meaning if this is undefined then result uh, by default has the value of the first element and i meaning from where we have to start iterating if there is an initial value 
then start iterating from the first index itself but if there is no initial value then result already has the first value so start iterating from the second meaning the first index second value okay so i hope that is clear now let's use the poly reduce and try to have the same thing so cart one dot poly reduce let's again not give it initial initial value let's see how it works yep working fine even if i give an initial value let's say i give an initial value of 5 so it will be added adding everything plus 5 so it will be 26 right see correct working fine and let's execute with our actual cart so cart and this time the logic will be plus item into item dot price into item dot quantity and initial value is 0 here I have to give initial value. If I won't give it, it will again be weird. Okay, there is some issue. I gave it the initial value, right? Zero. Oh, it is false. Okay, okay, I have to check. Zero is a false value, right? Is equals to undefined. And here also. Here it is. Mm. Now it will work fine. Okay, see, so you have to always check that. Here I was, what I was doing, I was expecting it as a file falsy value. But zero itself is a falsy value. So that's why it was not working. So I have to explicitly compare it with 25. Okay, using strict equality. So again, uh, let me explain this also strict equality. And uh, there's another which is uh, normal equality. Like, so difference between this, this is that this equality does coercion meaning if the types are not matching of left and right then it will coerce the right hand side value okay but triple equality which is a strict equality does not do coercion okay so it will if the let's say i'm comparing one with an uh, integer one with the string one in double equal to coercion will happen and both of them will be compared okay with integer okay um let both of them will be like integer one and then the result will be there but if i do it with triple equality and i, I compare string one with the integer one then coercion will not be happening at e in either of the operands and then it will return false because obviously string one is not equals to integer one okay so that is the important difference between the strict equality and double equals to that is clear um, so always use strict equality never use uh, double equality Mm, I think we have written so these folly fields are available in the this folly fields repo I'll add it in the description so you can get it okay so now that we are done with the poly fields also let's start uh, the event bubbling capture and delegation okay okay cool mm, so for this I have actually written a very elaborate article so you can access it over here please open it in a new tab otherwise you will lose the access of this save. so yeah mm, here i have already written this uh, it's already received uh, nice reactions so you might be thinking yeah uh, some of you would already be knowing what is capturing bubbling you like i already know why do i want to learn this so just go to this example okay so go to this example and try to get the answer without looking at the answer okay try to uh, deduce what you think will be the answer if you are able to answer like what will happen once you click the great grandchild div then don't need to do anything then you are good to go okay then then you don't need to read this article otherwise you need to read this article okay so now let me uh, help you understand what uh, event bubbling and all of that is so <coughs> there are different phases of an event whenever an event is fired by the user on the web app so first let's even understand what is an event so in your web app in your website whatever user does is an event now it depends on you whether you want to capture it or not even if he is doing like this this also an event okay even if he clicks that's an event if he scrolls that's an event okay if he drags something that's an event if he selects something that's an event everything is an event now it depends on you what sort of event you want to capture 
okay what sort of event you want to take action on of the user's event so whenever any event is fired by the user on the web app there are two phases one is capturing and one is bubbling first the event goes to the capturing phase and then it goes through the bubbling phase okay so now let's explain uh, let's understand what is capturing bubbling flow of the event from the parent element to the child element that is event capturing and flow of the event from the child element to parent elements that is the bubbling let's understand this by an example so i'll just copy this this time i'll also require the index or html okay so basically okay the body is not required we already have a body <coughs> so we have uh, three divs okay the we have three names the class is given to it parent child grandchild okay and we have given some styling to it let's see visually we will be able to understand okay so there are three divs this is the parent this is the child this is the grandchild okay now let's go back to our article we have three boxes and yeah that's uh, already helped you understand now let's take access to this access the nodes so now let me delete all this paste this save okay um one second So now, uh, what I'm doing is, first of all, I'm trying to get the access to DOM nodes, each of the div nodes. Okay. So one had the uh, class of parent, one had the class of child, one had the class of grandchild. So you can use query selector, document or query selector. You have to pass the uh, query, meaning is it a class? So it will be represented by dot. If it's an ID, represented by hash. Okay. Uh, so that's how you can pass it over here. And you can query that element, and that will be uh, for whatever the first matching will be there. That will be sent. If you are having like multiple, let's say multiple of your elements are having same class, then you can use query selector all, and all of them will be uh, in an array. That array will not be an actual array; it will be an HTML collection. So yeah, that's the difference. But uh, yeah, okay. cool. So now I have access to parent, child, and grandchild divs. What I'll do is I'll add event listeners to them. Okay, so how do can I add event listener using this add event listener function? Very simple. What sort of event do I want to add the listener to? Click. I want to add the listener to click. And second, this callback is a function which will be executed once this click event happens on this particular element. Okay. So this is how I registering an uh, event alert for an event. So for each of them, parent, child, and grandchild, I am registering. So now let's see what happens when I click it. This is the console. Delete this. If I click the let's let's say I click the parent. Parent event bubble bubble handler called. Okay, now now I'll explain why I have sent bubble event handler. Now let me clear this and let me click on this one child. Child once event handler was called. And also parent called. I did not click on child, but still it was called. Okay. Now let me click on the grandchild. Grandchild called, child called, parent called. All of them got called, even though I clicked only on grandchild. Now why did this happen? Now let me explain you. So what we did by default, unknowingly, we registered all these handlers. For the bubble phase of your event, I told you the two phase. One is capturing, one is bubble. So by default, whenever you register an event, it is registered for the bubble phase. Okay, meaning your event, as I told you, it will start from your parent, it will go to your from to the child, and then from child it will go to the parent. So whenever I click on child, like great child, okay, grandchild, the event will bubble up. Okay, and all the event handlers will be called. Again, okay, when if we click on this child, all the bubbled up events will be called. For parent, it's just one. Okay, I'll again do this. Parent is just one, 
because like it is the parent there is nothing above it now what if i want to uh, do the capture phase okay so let me show you that so let me just first go to the article all you have to do is the third parameter there is a third parameter which we by default is false you have to do it true so the the add event listener has three parameters one is the type of event second is the callback then the handler that you want to execute and third is the uh, capture so whether you want to capture it or uh, bubble it so i wanted to uh, by default i did not do so by default it was false so it was bubbling now now, now it will be in the capture phase now let's see how the behavior changes refresh after let me click on parent parent uh, actually i should uh, call this as capture now if i click on this child notice what how it will show parent capture event handler called child capture event handler called so what i did this time i registered these callbacks as part of the capture so as i told you whenever you fire an event first the capture happens then the bubble happens so capture happens from parent to child bubble happens from child to parent so because i registered it for capture it is from parent to child so parent handler was executed first and then only the child was executed okay now let me do this click here what you can expect because it is in capture phase what you should expect is parent will be executed first then this child and then the grandchild let's see that's how it is parent child grandchild understood this is the capturing phase so you have two phases now you might be thinking so it is either bubble or capture what if i want to do it for both the phases you can you can do it for both the phases okay so what you have to do is just copy this you can have multiple event listeners on the same element for the same type of event okay so let me just remove true from here and uh, let's just change this to bubble so now for each element parent child grandchild i am having two handlers one is in the capture phase one is in the bubble phase let's see how now the output becomes so as i told you let's remember for every event capture phase is there bubble phase is there but first capture then bubble so let me click on parent parent capture parent bubble got it now you might see little difference because in firefox it is a little bit weird but always remember first capture happens capture happens and bubble happens now the difference i'll show you so capture capture bubble bubble okay working fine i think the difference did not come i think it's fixed now but parent capture child capture child bubble parent bubble cool great parent capture because as i told event first capture for if it happens capture capture child capture grandchild capture grandchild bubble child bubble parent bubble so i hope this part is clear this is very very important okay people think that they know event delegation and capturing and bubbling that part i don't think they do uh, this is they know bubbling they know capturing but exactly what it is is very important to know okay so let's now go ahead in our article and let's understand what is propagation okay so um, propagation meaning uh, like the flow of your events okay so that entire flow is the propagation now what you can do you can uh, kind of stop the propagation if you want okay so let's let's understand what does it mean so mm, here basically after the capture phase and once it it reaches the uh, child level okay or let's say that's grandchild level i don't want the bubble of child and parent or, or or any bubble event after that to be executed so what i can do is in this function okay in the handler first of all i'll have access to the event and that event what i'll do is e dot stop propagation okay so in this callback what i did first of all i access the element 
okay and in that element i call the stop propagation meaning after it after this do not propagate the event do not uh, allow the flow of the event let's see how this will work so first of all let me click here this will not change let me click here this will not change why because the i did stop propagation only in grandchild so what did i do i did stop propagation in grandchild meaning the flow of event after and where did i do that's also important i did it in the bubbling wala event bubbling wala event handler meaning the capture phase will happen parent child grandchild grandchild capture grandchild bubble but after that i don't want anything to happen so those will not be executed let's see that works or not so you see that that's how we expected and that's how it worked parent capture child capture grandchild capture and then grandchild bubble that was the last in in this event handler i basically called the stop propagation and that's why the rest of the callbacks which were bubbling or uh, rest of the handlers which are supposed to be executed as part of the bubble did not were not executed okay try to so i'm trying to explain it very simply and very in a very slow manner uh so i hope you are able to understand it uh but if you're not just go through the article again go through this video again okay very important topics okay so again let's go back and let's uh, let's so there is one more thing actually after stop propagation there is also stop immediate prog propagation now you might think like wait what like why what is the difference why do i have another method let me help you understand that okay so so currently for each element you have two handlers one is for your capture phase and one is your for your bubble phase but even for same phase you can have multiple uh, events event handlers okay so let me paste this over here and save so basically what i did i added two more in the capture phase itself okay so in capture phase i already had one which is this now in capture phase i am adding two more and let me just not use this for now but thing is what i want is that only this capture phase handler should execute after that these and these should not execute but stop propagation what it does is that it will not stop all the handlers which are at uh, register for the current div current element okay so well, let, let me explain you okay so let me do this okay let me do it in the bubbling part so it will be able to understand it so these are for now for bubble uh okay so here what i did in the bubbling uh grandchild i did stop propagation and after that i am registering two events okay so now these should not be this i don't want these to be executed now but we'll see what happens the second grandchild the third grandchild capture i mean not capture bubble event did get executed why because they are at the same level okay means they are at of the same uh, element and hence they were uh, executed but i don't want them to be executed also so what can i do i can use e dot stop immediate propagation meaning even for this element whatever handlers are there okay which are in bubble phase do not execute them so let me click here see now grandchild capture grandchild bubble then nothing got executed okay so that's the difference between stop propagation and stop immediate propagation i hope that is clear to you i i'm not even sure if anyone is watching the live stream but if anyone if anyone is watching this afterwards i hope that is clear to you uh like do you put it in comment if you are able to understand all the stuff okay that will actually let me know that people are to we were actually watching the videos um that is clear now let's go to understand the delegation part okay this is the important part now event delegation is just a side effect of event bubbling okay so um, in other words to uh, have event delegation we have to make use of the bubbling phase of an event okay so let's understand that there are like this this thing Uh, let me you know replace the html 
So basically, we have a div with an ID of root, in which we have one of Avengers H1, and then we have list of Avengers. Okay. Now what I want to do is, whenever anyone clicks on any of the Avengers name, I want to do some task. Okay. For simplicity, I'll just keep it as logging in the console. So how can I do that? The simple answer, okay, would be that you add event listeners to each of them. Thanks, thanks, Abhi, for the clarification, um, like confirmation that you are there and you are. It's clear. So we have a p tag, and I what I want to do is if I click on any of them, I want to uh, do some action. For now, let's consider simple action like console logging that. So <coughs> what I can do is I can add event listeners to each of them. For each of the element, I can uh, get the reference and I can add an uh, event listener to each of them. That's one way. But thing is, let's say this is a six. Let's say there are thousands of Avengers. So then you'll be adding thousands of event handlers to the each and every element. Not each and every element, but there will be there will be total thousands of handlers functions. Okay, there will be thousands of uh, event listeners. So that is not so good for the performance. But at at, at certain time. Your, you will have some memory issues okay and even if you don't have like, there will be issues for cleanup okay you there might be some event listeners with that which might not be cleaned up or something like this okay so to avoid that what you can do is you can use event delegation meaning we know that even if we click over here the event will eventually be will be propagated up and it will be uh, coming over here so why not uh, use that effect of bubbling and capture the event over there itself okay so let me help you understand that mm. now all of this is not required mm. okay so we have a root div okay and which is the uh, query selector uh, like we are accessing by root and now what we are doing is we are adding an event handler to root div here it is root div add event listener for click okay so anywhere within that div if someone clicks this event handler will be executed anywhere in, in, the, in that uh, div entire div okay so that entire div contains all these p tags this event handler will be executed now when this is executed what we want to do we want to do something only when it is clicked on any of these p tags not when it is clicked on in this h1 tag or anywhere else okay so how do we confirm whether it was clicked on that so we always have access to the event okay that event object has a target <coughs> okay so target will have the element where we actually clicked so event dot target will always have will be the element where we actually clicked okay so what we'll see we'll have a if condition and that we will see basically event dot target dot actually uh, earlier I, don't, I did not know that this has a method so i i was converting it into array and doing that stuff so basically class list is your node list it is not your array so that's why i was converting it but no, we don't need to do this we can directly uh, use contains contains okay so event dot target dot class list so basically event dot target is the element on which we clicked and in that element if i want to access its classes whatever classes that it has so that i can access using class list and that will be returning me some some uh, not an array it will be some node list or something something different some collection something like that but that is not an array so uh, earlier i was converting into an array but not required we have a contains method on this class list which will tell me whether this particular class is available in this class list or not so what i have to see if the element which I have create, clicked on has a cl class of Avenger. Okay, and just to be safe, I am also checking that its tag name is P, because I could have another, let's say, um, H three tag, whose also class could be Avenger. Just for a sec, like, like um, there is no reason for having it, but let's say this is also there. So just to be safe, I am also checking that the tag name is also P. So I am checking two condition: whether the event dot target, meaning this element on which I have clicked, has a class of Avenger. And also it is a p tag if this is the condition then only console log even dot target dot text content so i just wanted to console log the text content so let's see how this works 
see I'm clicking on the names and those are getting printed if I click on Avengers nothing will happen why because it is not a p tag it is not having a class of uh, Avenger okay but it is still within the root within the div yeah, I'm clicking over here still it is within the div so the function this function would be executed but the event that I the thing that I want to happen the interaction that I want to happen will not be happening okay so this is how what event allocation works so whenever we click anywhere over here the event bubbles up event bubbles up it is uh, captured by the parent one okay and the parent one can check from where did this event come then based on that element we can have some checks whether like it will be class list or any sort of checks we want okay and then you can take the action accordingly so yeah this is about event delegation I hope it was clear uh, you can again go through this article or uh, go through this video again and if you like this video you can share it with your friends so today my plan was also to teach object uh, pure functions and object deep comparison but I think pure function is very simple I'll teach it no 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 issue but object deep comparison will take in the uh, next session okay. pure function I have already taught in my react sessions but uh, yeah this is a JavaScript question so I should teach here itself so <clears throat> it's very simple there's nothing uh, too much uh, about it so pure functions are functions whose output depends only on the parameters and nothing else okay and if you send the same parameters it will give always the same output okay so let me explain let's say this is the function and you have to be here. so this is a function whose output it is depending only on this a and b doesn't matter how many times I call uh, calculate 5 and 6 okay I can call it 10 number of times still output will remain same it will never change so this is a pure function okay and also these pure function should not do any side effect let me explain that so let's say I have a const pi equals to 3.14 let's say 24 and what I'm doing over here inside this function I'm returning this itself but also what I'm doing is also what I do is I change the value of pi okay so what I'm doing I'm trying to update something which is outside this function so that is known as side effect so this will then this is not a pure function okay so even though the output value is do, totally dependent on these two parameters only nothing else is dependent but still this is not a pure function because it is having a side effect okay and another thing which is very clear actually that if uh, this if the output actually was dependent on an external factor which is not this then also this is not a pure function because this could change later okay this could change later and then then output of this will let's say I have uh, this call of 5 and 6 after some time someone updates this value so then this output will change right so then consistency is not there and hence this is then this will not become a pure function okay so what is a pure function then the for the function if the output is only dependent on the given parameters then it is a pure function okay when to use pure function so your reducer your reducer is a pure function okay uh, then if you in react if you are aware of pure components those are based on pure functions okay so these are some real examples here one uh, now yeah this that's about the pure functions and <coughs> also I'm done with today's session whatever I wanted to cover I actually wanted to cover object deep compression but we can take it in the <coughs> next session okay uh, cool there's a lot of JavaScript remaining still so, uh, we'll have at least two 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 three sessions more and we might even do some DOM project uh, at the end of that but yeah for today that's it uh, I'll still be here if you guys have any doubt and uh, let me know um, if you guys have any doubt okay so <coughs> yeah that's a uh, 
it for today's session let me still be over here mm. just sip some water any doubt you know anything that i have taught today let me know tomorrow we will be having the react session which will be the fourth session in that and in that i will be teaching you guys the most probably i'll be doing the project itself so um yeah that that's uh, i got confused on stop provocation so you can uh, learn that you can uh, just go through the video again uh, uh, because stop propagation is like see basically uh, this uh, there was the article so within the div basically from the grandchild so i told you that there are two phases one is your uh, capture phase one is a bubble phase so at any event handler that i am registering at in, in, in any of the phase if i call e dot stop propagation okay if i call e dot stop propagation then the flow of event will break meaning let's say i have six call, six handlers three for the capture phase like in capture phase of 1 2 3 and 3 for the bubble phase now let's say in the capture of grandchild i put e dot stop propagation meaning now whenever i click on grandchild okay the event will go and only the handler of this grandchild will be executed after that it will not be executed okay so that is what i am talking about okay so one second yeah uh, so yeah that's what i was talking about so the event will stop the propagation from wherever it uh, wherever the fun that e dot stop propagation is called anyways just go through the article again go through the video again you will be able to understand uh, it might take some time just try to like see the examples do do create different different handlers do true do false try to create e dot stop propagation then you will be able to understand better okay experiment with it uh drop your article again yeah it's on it's there it's in the slides uh, and slides link is there in the description and i will also add the this uh, uh, article link also in the description separately um web pack and react session web pack and react session i will i will uh, i remember i, I think uh, you told me to do it i will do it do that uh, one of the sessions uh, in tomorrow session let's see i am not sure but definitely i'll teach it i that is my word i'll definitely teach it in one of the sessions for sure okay cool so yeah that's it for today's session uh, i hope you learned something new um well, i'll still be there um, for two more minutes but i'm not on the screen um, if you have any doubts tell me okay cool thank you for joining guys bye bye